Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology Bhagavad Gita playlist. And we have completed the first 17 shlokas from the second chapter. And here we have reached the 18th verse today. And this is one of the most famous shlokas of the Bhagavad Gita. And we have finally reached. So let us start. And yes, before that, we discuss the power of the soul in the previous verse, which was a very long verse. We had two videos and we had discussed there about the Hatha Yoga system and the, the size of the soul that uh, when we cut uh, the upper point of the hair into 100 parts and each of the parts we again cut into 100 parts, that is the size of the soul. And we also saw that in the Mundaka Upanishad, the atomic soul is mentioned. Okay, And we saw how to become more stronger in life, to deal with challenges by connecting ourselves to the ultimate source of all strength, that is Krishna himself. Alright, so here we start with the 18th verse and we will recite prayers to our preceptors who has bestowed this divine knowledge unto us. Om Agyan Timiran Dhasya Gyanan Janashala Kaya Chakshur Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha all right, because this is a very crucial shloka, I would prefer to recite this shloka three times. All right, you can also recite Antavanta ime deha nityas yukta shari rinaha anashino aprame yasya tasmat yudhasva bharata Antavanta ime deha nityas yukta shari rinaha anashino aprame yasya tasmat yudhasya bharataha Antavantai medeha nitya shyokta sharirinaha anashino aprame yasya tasma bhyudhasva bharata. The translation to this book is as follows The material body of the indestructible, immeasurable, and eternal living entity is sure to come to an end. Therefore, fight, O descendant of Bharata. Who is this descendant of Bharata? It is Arjuna himself. So you will see Lord Krishna um, will address Arjuna in many places by this word Bharata. Okay. Bharata means O oh, descendant of Bharata. So, so in Vedic tradition, the family lineage is always stressed. So you will see Arjuna is very frequently addressed as uh, Kaunteya, Bharata, okay, Pandava, which means he is the Pandav, means he is the son of Pandu. Kaunteya means his mother is Kunti, okay, and uh, Bharata means he is the descendant of uh, Maharaj Bharat, who is one of the great personalities. There are many Bharats in the Vedic tradition. One Bharat is the uh, son of Rishabdev, after which uh, the Holy Land of India is named. And this Bharat is referring to uh, the Bharat in the dynasty of the Kurus. Okay? He was also another great personality, very great personality. He was known as the Chakravarti Samrat. Okay? And then from the Treta Yu, we always also have uh, Bha another Bharat who is none other than the brother of Lord Ramachandra himself, the younger brother. So in these three yugas, we have these three Bharats. <laughs> Sati Yuga and then Treta Yuga and Dwapar Yuga. Okay. So of course in different Kalpas, these pastimes can occur in our different Yugas. Okay. So we cannot uh, put a uh, we cannot put a stamp that this Bharat is from this Yuga or from that Yuga. But in general, whenever you see the word Bharata, this in the Bhagavad Gita, it is referring to Arjuna's ancestor Bharat Maharaj. Okay, so we will discuss about Bharat Maharaj some other time. <laughs> and Shakuntala Devi, of course, these are great personalities in the Vedic tradition. Okay, so let's read the translation once again. The material body of the, which means the material body is belonging to somebody. Okay, who is that? Indestructible, immeasurable, and eternal living entity. So, three characteristics of the living entity, who is we ourselves. That indestructible, immeasurable, and eternal. Yes, Sat 
Chit Ananda, full of eternity, knowledge and bliss, is sure to come to an end. Therefore, fight, O descendant of Bharata. So basically, Krishna is referring, uh, Krishna is uh, addressing Arjuna here. Uh, Krishna is telling him that you are concerned that if you do not, that if you kill these people, what will happen? But anyways, the material body will die, will come to an end. All right. So essentially, Krishna is telling him, if you do not kill them, somebody else will kill or they will die. Hmm? All right. So this is the shloka which confirms that everybody dies. Therefore, they say in English, as sure as death. <laughs> and an intelligent person always prepare for death. An intelligent person always asks this question. What will be the situation when I am dying? Not in a sense of uh, creating fear or in a negative sense, but in a healthy sense, he asks this question that, Will I be able to remember God when I die or what will be my situation? Who will be the people that will be surrounding me during my death? Who will be the people? Where will I die? Will I be able to die in a place where the spiritual uh, atmosphere is blooming? Not necessarily in a holy place. It can be in a city or in a town or any metro also. But will I be surrounded by personalities who will make me remember God's name and his pastimes and his form? Or will I be surrounded by materialistic people who will be waiting that when will I die so that we can assert his or her property and we can drag him down from everything that he has? <laughs> All right. So we should always ask this question to ourselves. So let us start with the purport. It's a very beautiful purport. Purport, the material body is perishable by nature. It may perish immediately or it may do so after a hundred years. It is, it is a question of time only. There is no chance of maintaining it indefinitely. But the spirit soul is so minute that it cannot even be seen by an enemy to say nothing of being killed. We discussed how small the spirit soul is in the last two verses, right? As mentioned in the previous verse, it is so small that no one can have any idea how to measure its dimension. So from both viewpoints, there is no cause of lamentation because the living entity as he is cannot be killed nor can the material body be saved for any length of time or permanently protected. Let me repeat this statement. This is the crux of this verse. So from both viewpoints, there is no cause of lamentation. Because the living entity as he is cannot be killed, nor can the material body be saved for any length of time or permanently protected. So, the, this statement is very crucial because there are two things mentioned. The soul can never be killed or you cannot harm the soul basically. And... You cannot protect the body after a certain amount of time. So Arjuna's lamentation that uh, if I kill these people, I kill Bhishma and Drona and my cousins, then, then I will not have anything to live for, to enjoy because everybody will die. Well, that is baseless because they will never die because they, when Arjuna says, I don't want to kill them, Arjuna is basically referring to the personalities and the personalities never die. They are spirit soul, souls and they will eternally live. And if Arjuna thinks that I will not kill them by protecting their body, yes, well then the body is anyways going to perish one day. That is what Krishna is telling that. The soul will never die and the body will never live after a certain point of time. So, your lamentation is useless. Therefore, fight, O descendant of Bharata. 
So now the question is, why is Krishna uh, referring to him as Bharata here? Krishna could have referred to him as, you know, Parantapa, Dhananjaya, or Pandava, or, or Hontaya. But why is he using the word Bharata here? Because, <clears throat> because the word Bharata means Krishna is not connecting him to his mother or father. You know? He is directly connecting him to the entire, to the dynasty which he belongs So And his concern is about the dynasty that uh, if I kill these people, what will happen to my dynasty? You know, my dynasty will be over. It will be finished. Even if it is not finished, it will become very small, and my family will, uh, my family size will reduce. There will be religion all throughout. So, Krishna is in, uh, actually indicating to Arjuna that look, all these people, all your family members who belong to your, uh, you know, your uh, dynasty, they will be preserved because they are not their bodies. So they are spirit souls and they will always live. <coughs> Sorry. And if you want to protect their body, then after some time, they will anyways perish. So you, you, do not, you should not think that you are the one who are killing them. You should not think like that because they, they have done a lot of irreligious activities and they do not deserve to live. They deserve to be killed, the Kurus. And therefore, don't think that if you spare their life, they, their bodies will be spared. One day the body will deteriorate and it will be finished. And as souls, they will always live. So therefore, there is no cause of lamentation because the person will always live and the body shall never live after some time. <laughs> The minute particle of the whole spirit acquires this material body according to his work and therefore observance of religious principles should be utilized. In the Vedanta Sutras, the living entity is qualified as light because he is, a, he is part and parcel of the supreme light. As sunlight maintains the entire universe, so the light of the soul maintains this material body. As soon as the spirit soul is out of this material body, the body begins to decompose. Therefore, it is the spirit soul which maintains this body. Wow. The body itself is unimportant. Arjuna was advised to fight and not sacrifice the cause of religion for material bodily considerations. Right, so this shloka is very important because this shloka tells us how and why we should stop lamenting in life because of you know, losing certain things. Because most of the times the things that we lament for are materialistic uh, objects basically. You know. Right. I know people who lament for losing somebody. So once there was a man who um, who had called me and said that uh, his wife had passed away and that is why he was in depression and he was in serious anxiety. And he was telling me that how he is not able to uh, get, get out of this trauma. And he was asking me, sir, what should I do? I said, well, uh, there are many things you can do, but before doing anything, there's something you have to understand. That is, this, uh, this person who was in a female's body as your wife is now not, it's not that she, she is no more. It, it's just that she's not there in that body anymore. So she's always there in some uh, some an other body she would definitely be there she could be in a, another woman's body or in a man's body in this life or she could be in a dog's body or a bird's body or a cat's or elephant's body depending on her karma so you should never think that that person has died or that person has been uh, that person has just extinguished himself or herself why because after some point of time, you know, this man was in his uh, 30s and he was just uh, recently married some years back and he was very much in distress. So I told him that anyways, 
after a certain point of time you know, maybe after 30 years or 40 years when you reach 60 or 70 maybe anyways you both would have been separated because either of the one will leave before either you will either you will perish before her then she will cry in separation from you or imagine she perish she dies before you then you will you would have again cried for uh, being separated from her and imagine uh, the imagine if the your wife would pass later and you would contract some terminal disease and then you realize that you will leave your body before she leaves her body okay if, if this would have happened after 30 40 years then how miserable you would be in your deathbed thinking that oh now i will die and i will not be able to stay with uh, my wife no? so either you would have died earlier or either they would have died she would have died before you either ways you would have anyways ended up suffering if if not now then in the future but the problem is people do not realize this people think oh we will see what happens after 50 years you know after 60 years why to think of death now why to think of what happens after 50 years you know, let's think of the present i lost her in the present i lost him what will happen what will i do but a intelligent person is very far sighted he always tries to see what is there ahead right he or she doesn't get obsessed about the present which which does not mean they are not concerned they are concerned but an intelligent person will realize that yes i'm crying i'm in depression this person has gone i feel lonely i feel terrible i feel miserable i feel like dying but this was anyway supposed to happen one day if not now then after 50 years okay either she left you before or you left her either ways you were you were destined to cry because of your attachment right so it it seems that somebody has actually left us you know, or sometimes uh, friends they leave each other you know they quarrel and they fight but essentially once we read this shloka we understand that one day anyways everybody will leave us or we will leave everybody <laughs> yes it could happen that the people that you know currently when you are watching this video your mother your father your husband your wife everybody your sons your daughters your all the circle your full circle maybe they live with you for the next 20 30 years but maybe you may not live after a month who knows anything can happen tomorrow you may you may leave you may live only for one day you may live only for one minute you may anything can happen to you anytime so we have to understand that is why the scriptures say that uh, even lord krishna says in the gita na, abhamma bhuvana loka punar avarti no juna so from the brahma loka to patala everything all the places in this material existence they are a source of misery basically why do why does krishna say that because even if you go to the heavens and you enjoy with drinking you know uh, this uh sombras by drinking amrit or you enjoy with uh heavenly bodies of the opposite sex but at the end of the day you will always ah brahma bhuva na loka punaravarti nojo you again have to come back to this earth okay and when you do karmas here by the karmas that you do in this earth it is fixed if you will go to the heavenly higher realms you know like uh all lower realms lower realms means atala sutala vitala tala tala mahatala patala like this and then above there is you know uh mahaloka swarga loka tapa loka jnana loka like this there are many lokas headed by satya loka at the top or lord brahma resides so wherever you go uh, after your punya or the papa is extinguished you again come back to this uh, bhuloka okay this earthly realm and whatever you do here is ultimately going to decide where will be your destination in the next life and in many 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 lives so therefore uh, we should understand that whenever we uh, see somebody who is you know very 
very happy, very smiling, giggling, you know, two men and women are enjoying with each other or they are having a great time together. So then you have to realize that eventually they are going to end up crying because now they are attached. In future, they will be separated. The situation is going to be very miserable. All right. And we should realize that about us also, not that we realize it about others. All right. So we have to realize that one day we will be in a serious predicament and our situation will be precarious. And at that time, if we do not have spiritual consciousness, then we will be stuck with all this, you know, family members, relatives, husband, wife, mother, father, son, daughter, grandfather, granddaughter, you know, grand, grand or whatever you call it, great grand. <laughs> all right. You know, so many people I know, they are so much attached to their grandchildren or great grandchildren also. So, <clears throat> We have to cultivate spiritual knowledge as we progress in our life. And then only we can be free from these attachments. And only then we can obtain the spiritual world. Otherwise, we again have to take birth in this material world. And we have to again start from A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Everything is finished. Everything is null, zero. Repeat. Start again. All right. So that is it from my side. Uh, I hope this uh, verse was very soothing for all of us because this verse gave us the realization that ultimately we cannot preserve the body after a certain limit, beyond a certain extent. And the soul which we want to preserve, we want to protect the soul will always be there. The soul doesn't leave anywhere, all right? It just goes to another body. Or if it has perfected its life, then it goes back to the spiritual world. All right. Thank you very much. If you like this video, click the thumbs up and share it with somebody who is always lamenting because of losing certain things in life. And if you want a consultation from me, you can go to the description section down below. And if you have not watched my previous videos from this playlist, then please watch them in this playlist itself. All right. God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him.